Back in 2013, the original Moto X was a breath of fresh air to a smartphone community already growing fatigued of phablet disease. It was a smaller, humbler phone that focused on usability, not braggability. A smartphone to restore sanity. Well, that sanity was short-lived. Last year's sequel to the original Moto X upped the build quality and processor specs while also significantly expanding the phone's size. It was still a fantastic device, but in inflating itself to appeal to a mainstream audience, it lost some of the whimsy that had made its predecessor so compelling. Flash forward to 2015, and it seems the newly Lenovo-fied Motorola has no intention of returning to a niche audience. The third generation Moto X Pure Edition is a 5.7 inch quad HD monster of a smartphone primed to do battle with the top end phablets of the modern world and its price to move. How much of the original Moto X vision does it sacrifice to get there? And is the trade off worth it? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's find out. The first thing you notice when you take the Moto X Pure Edition out of the box is its big ol' footprint. Motorola told us it wanted to build something for people who use their smartphone as a media device for browsing and movie watching. And the requisite big display necessitated an expanded chassis as well. The phone tips the scales at 179 grams, more massive even than the all-glass Galaxy Note 5. And it's chubby too, hitting 11 millimeters at its thickest point. This is probably the biggest departure Motorola makes from the spirit of the Moto X as a whole. The Pure Edition is as prodigious as its predecessors were pocketable. Fortunately, Motorola makes it work through ergonomics. The rounded backside lets the body taper to just over 6 millimeters at the edges, and the trademark dimple is more than just a visual counterbalance to the camera lens. It's an anchor point for a fingertip to make using the phone more comfortable. The bezels flanking the display are slim enough to make the Moto X a fairly narrow phone. While their screen sizes are somewhat comparable, the Moto X Pure Edition is a much less cumbersome device than its wide-body cousin, the Nexus 6. And Motorola's spared no expense on the display itself. It's Quad HD and 5.7 inches on the diagonal, which makes for a density of 515 ppi, more than enough resolution for even the most persnickety pixel pusher. It's really a very pretty screen, but it's not perfect. Direct sunlight can still overwhelm it, and I really wish Motorola had stuck with an AMOLED panel instead of making the switch to IPS here. LCD technology just can't replicate OLED's inky blacks, and the lower contrast means Motorola's active display is tougher to see if there's any glare on the Gorilla Glass. Fortunately, almost anything else you don't like about the Moto X hardware you can change before you buy it. Ordering a Moto X Pure Edition through Moto Maker is a lot like custom building your own car. Between backing material, accent and frame colors, and storage options, there are over a thousand possible design variations. We went with silicone rubber backing, which might be one of the grippiest phone materials I've ever encountered. In concert with the metal side rails, it gives the phone a really solid, no-nonsense feel. And it's also a subtle reminder that the phone is water-resistant to an extent. The Pure Edition also packs a nice surprise on the flip side of its nano SIM tray, a micro SD card slot good for up to 128 gigs of extra storage. And while we're up there, fun fact, the Moto X does indeed support a notification LED right behind its upper speaker grill, but it's unused by the software for good reason. That reason is the aforementioned active display. You can pick the phone up or just wave your hand over the screen to trigger an automatic preview of the time and your waiting notifications. Use it for a while and you really miss it when moving to a phone that doesn't have something similar. That goes for the rest of the Moto features too, which are largely unchanged from previous Moto X versions. The phone can still read your text messages aloud and let you respond by voice dictation if it detects you're driving. A cool feature, even if it's a little hit and miss. New text from Chris Larson. To hear it, say listen. Listen. Chris said, Chris Larson, yo, don't take Massachusetts Avenue because the traffic is mad epic and terrible. To reply to Chris, say send message. Send message. Say your message. Too late, Brosif. I think you said 28 Brosif. Is that correct? Yeah. No. Awesome. I'll send that now. 
It'll also silence your alerts if the calendar tells it you're in a meeting, and you can set custom behaviors for specific locations like work and home. Moto Voice is back as well, so you can ask questions and give commands completely hands-free using a custom key phrase. Okay, Jarvis, play Pinback on Spotify. All right. If that's a little obtrusive for you, there's a new voice feature here. Just raise the phone to your ear and wait for the tone, then speak a command or question, and you'll get your replies through the earpiece. And if you find yourself in need of a flashlight on the quick, you don't need to fire up the display to do it. Just give the Moto X a little chop-chop, and bam, you're in Torchtown. Some of these features are better in concept than execution. The key phrase recognition process is still slower than just picking the phone up and hitting the microphone button, and a voice dictation as a whole can be hit and miss at times. But overall, the software is probably where Motorola sticks to its roots the most. These are intelligent improvements that add to the smartphone experience without crossing over into intrusive bloatware. Motorola didn't go with the standard Google software for the Moto X camera, though, instead returning for the third year to its custom-built Viewfinder app. That means you can easily launch the camera using the double-twist gesture, one of our favorite Moto X features since the beginning. But it's not always so convenient. If you're a fan of one-handed shooting, it can be really hard to change settings or focus and exposure on the fly, and there are precious few manual controls to help out in a challenging situation. Also, the Pure Edition really seems to hate shooting in 4K mode. It slows the entire phone to a crawl, and the temperature skyrockets. It's literally a hot mess. Fortunately, the hardware makes it worth it. The sensor here is a Sony IMX230 that maxes out at 21 megapixels and brings a new and really quite good digital stabilization package. Phase detection autofocus makes it pretty easy to get a clear shot, and color reproduction is significantly better than on last generation Sony sensors, like the one in the Nexus 6. As with all smartphone cameras, this one is much happier in broad daylight. Turn the lights down and your photos start getting noisier, grainier, and, well, just worse. But again, that's par for the course. Probably the biggest surprise for me came in video testing, where the new sensor and stabilization work together to make for some really excellent footage. Thankfully, the stuttering in the viewfinder doesn't translate to the end result. The improvements have made their way to the front side, too, with the 5 megapixel selfie cam now augmented by an LED flash. But I'm not a big fan of this. It washes out faces, it doesn't work in anything but the darkest rooms, and third-party apps like Twitter and Snapchat can't yet access it because it's so uncommon. Besides, the camera does just fine without the flash, in most circumstances anyway. I find another software enhancement much more compelling. The camera will now automatically recognize barcodes, QR codes, and business cards and let you scan them right into your contacts list or copy them to your clipboard. It's a little on the slow side, but there's no switching modes or downloading apps or fumbling with plugins. It just works right out of the box. When you take the useful features together with the newly upgraded optics, the Pure Edition becomes the first Moto X I'd actually want to use for photography. I've used the Pure Edition for over a week in greater Boston and rural New York, predominantly on T-Mobile US. What's nice about a phone marketed as compatible with any network, though, is that switching carriers is literally as easy as swapping SIMs, at least when it comes to GSM carriers. The phone doesn't even need a reboot, it just registers on the new network, switches to another preloaded APN set, and poof. It's like it's always been an AT&T phone. Voice quality is solid as well, as we've come to expect from Motorola, and reception is good too. Though if you're in a region where Band 12 support is a requisite, be sure to check out our full review linked in the description below for more notes on that. Less impressive than voice quality or reception is battery life. A 3000 mAh power pack is not enough, it seems, to keep pace with all the Moto X can do. If I minimize how much I use the phone and militantly police my app activity, I can get to the end of a day with light to moderate use. But even then, 
it's tough to hit four hours of screen on time. If, on the other hand, I use the phone the way I want to, which is to say heavily, the phone is dead in five hours or less. More detailed usage stats are in the full review at Pocket Now. On the plus side, the included 25 watt turbocharger juices up the phone stupid fast. It still sucks to be a wall hugger, but at least with this charger, you don't have to be one for long. Finally, general performance on the Snapdragon 808 processor is very good. Even graphics laden games run quite well, and the twin front firing speakers give you a face full of sound while you play. Just hold on tight if you're jerking the wheel a lot. While the silicone is grippy, the Moto X runs hot. And under a load, it gets hot enough to get a good sweat film going on your fingertips. If you've been a fan of the Moto X family since the beginning, the Pure Edition is only superficially familiar. Instead of a smart yet humble handheld, it's a spec-packed phablet. It's the antithesis of what the original Moto X represented. But not everyone is a smartphone philosophizer. And this phone wasn't built for old-timey Motorola fans. It was built to turn regular people into new ones. Like Google's Nexus family, the Moto X line has evolved over time to mean something different. If you like what it's evolved into, namely a husky handheld with smart features and the power to keep up with almost anything you can throw at it, then the Moto X Pure Edition is a really good smartphone. Add in the class-leading customizability and the fact that you can buy it unlocked for way cheaper than most of the competition, and it becomes a great smartphone. Be sure to take in our full written review at Pocket Now, linked in the description below. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and if you get a Moto X Pure Edition, I want to know about it. Tweet at me, Captain Two Phones. That's Captain, the number two phones. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.